We are now live. Good morning, Abisters. We are talking about dressing dogs. So if you have an opinion about dressing dogs, how many people have dogs as pets? Oh, I have a dog. How many of you dress dogs? On Halloween, my How many people have cats? How many people dress their cats? Your sister did? Okay. We're now going to talk about polar coordinates. And hopefully we can go through these quickly. I'm going to actually have you do some of the problems, so make sure you have your calculators out ready to rumble. Uh, the idea of polar coordinates is you have a coordinate plane. This is still X. This is still Y. This is a particular angle measurement called theta. And when we move in this direction, theta is positive. Does anybody know why? Because we call that counterclockwise, right? So because of the counter, I thought it was counterintuitive. But does anybody know why that's got to be positive? So the whole idea of the coordinate plane came up from a group of people called the Babylonians. And they were... They lived in the Northern Hemisphere. I think it's where Persia, Iran, Iraq, Turkey, I think it's kind of in that area, but I'm not a geography person. And they, their whole culture was based on the night sky. And they noticed that they're the ones that came up there 360 degrees in a circle because there's approximately 360 days in a circle, it's a full moon about every 30 days, and there were 12 full moons. So that's how they approximated. And if they look at the night sky, this right here is the North Star. And the constellations would rotate in the sky in a counterclockwise fashion. So this mimics the sky. Okay. In, pardon? In fact, that's why I have that clock. Because... Now comes the mechanical clock, correct? And you have to make a decision. You know, I'm going to divide up this thing. How should its movement be? Should it be this direction? Clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or this direction? Well, the Greeks had the sundial. And if you look at the shadow of the sundial, it moves in this direction. And the Greeks are a lot cooler than the Babylonians, I guess. And so, you know, they had a vote, and the Greeks won. You know, they wore togas. As opposed to, I don't know what Babylonians wore, leather? I don't know. Uh, some of that's not true, but that's always my version. Okay? So, this way, it's less than zero. Okay? And this is a defined distance that we're going to call R. And so if you think about this, if I have the equation r equals 3, that means i got to go 3 units. This thing, by the way, is called the pole. Then I'm going 3 units out from the pole, and I can go in any direction. So if that endpoint would, if I would take a look at the po points at the end of r, it would create a circle. And that's a very nice equation to describe a circle. This, by the way, is the same circle. It means rather than go out in this direction, it's going in the opposite direction. That's what this means, in the opposite direction. But if it can rotate freely, it makes, makes the same circle as this. Does that make sense to everybody? That's something that you got to keep in mind. Um, over here. Um, this would be a radius of 1, 1. This would be, I would call that R2. I would call that R3. And so this point right here would be R1 comma theta. 
This would be R2 comma theta. This would be R3 comma <coughs> theta. That always bothered me because I compared it to X comma Y and X is the independent variable and Y is the dependent variable, correct? Well here, this is the independent variable and this is the dependent variable, so it's reversed. So we usually write R in terms of theta. You need to know this. So, um, you can see it's related to the unit circle. Right here, this is R. This distance is Y. And I'll make it bigger too. Oops, that did not help going that way. <laughs> How about that? Does that work? That works even better, and if I make it a little bit bigger, it might even be better. And so this is X, correct? And so we can look at this right triangle like this. Here's X, or excuse me, here's Y, here's X, here's theta. So the cosine of theta, and here's R is um, x over r, and that's where we get x equals r theta. R cosine theta, r cosine theta thank you. And y equals y over r, and that's where we get y equals r sine of theta. You need to know that. And as in everything, I hardly remember anything, but I can make this triangle. I also can come up with this. R equals the square root of x squared plus y squared from the Pythagorean theorem. And I also can get that theta can be found as the tangent inverse or the arctangent of y over x. And depending on what quadrant you're in, you might have to as, add pi to that. Because if you get, if x was negative and y was negative or x uh, the point x, y is in the third quadrant, tangent is going to be positive, isn't it, right? But what, indi what would indicate that you're in the third quadrant is that x would be neg a negative value and y would be a negative value, right? And then you'd know what answer you would compute, you would have to add pi to it. Because the answer it would give you would be here and you want to be here. Are we okay with that? All right. Uh, some other things is, let's say I have the point um, 1 comma pi over 4. So I would go pi over 4 and go out 1. So that would be this point. How did I get there? I went pi over 4 and then went one unit out. <coughs> but because of my angle measurement, I could say I went 1 and then went one rotation all the way around and went 9 pi over 4. So started here, went 2 pi, and went another pi over 4. Or I could say I went in this direction. And that would be a negative 7 pi over 4 and went 1 unit. 
Or I could say I went to here which would be, this is 4 pi over 4, so 5 pi over 4. But to bring me to here, I would go opposite and be at an, and say a negative 1. Remember, a negative 1 means the opposite location than what you're at. So 1 comma 5, po, 5 pi over 4 would put me here, but a negative 1 would put me back here. Likewise, I could say I'm at negative 1 and go in this direction, which would be a negative 5 pi over 4, and that would put me back to here. So you can see you have multiple answers for the same point. So 1 comma 50 degrees, here's 45 degrees, 50 degrees is a little bit more than that, so this right here would be 1. And 3 pi over 4, here's pi over 4, 1, 2, 3. So that's just plotting that. That's where point number 2 is. They expect you on AP to be able to plot coordinate points. Next page. So um, x is equal to r cosine theta, and y equals r sine theta. So in this case, x is going to equal 2 cosine of 5 pi over 6, which means x is what? And they expect you to be able to do this without a calculator. So the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is the opposite of the cosine of pi over 6. Because 5 pi over 6 is in the second quadrant. So you need to know what the cosine of pi over 6, and I can see people stressing already. Square root of 3 over 2, so it would be a negative square root of 3 over 2, correct? And you're going to multiply it by 2, so what would you get? Negative square root of 3. Very good. So then this would be 2 times the sine of 5 pi over 6. You're in the second quadrant. And Hannah, I'm going to pick on you since you're on a roll, okay? And so what is the sine of 5 pi over 6? Uh, it's going to be positive because it's above the x-axis. Positive 1 half times 2, and that would be 1. Right, so your point is going to be negative square root of 3, comma, 1. This one, you're going to have to use your calculator. So x and y. What would they be, um, Gavin? You got your machine in front of you, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So. Okay, so you took one times the cosine of three, correct? Yep. And you got. It's, it's close to the co a negative? Yeah. A negative what? Some point. I guess 9, 9, 0. Okay. And y would be 1 times the cosine, oh, excuse me, sine of 3? 0.141. Point, one, four, one. point what? 1, 4. Four. You guys have questions? Okay. And Jonathan, uh, x would be 2, and I guess switch to degrees, and I'm sorry about that, but they do ask questions in degrees. 2 times the cosine of 40 degrees would be what? 1.532. And y would be 2 times the sine of 40 degrees, correct? 
And that's equal to what? 1.286. Converting, uh, a couple of things. I always have to plot where these are. So 1 comma negative 1 is down here. Correct? Fourth quadrant. So I can either have a negative angle measurement, correct, or a positive angle measurement bigger than the square root of 3 over 2. I know that theta is equal to the tangent inverse of negative 1 over 1, and the tangent inverse of 1 is pi over 4. So I always choose the easiest way, and for the easiest way for me, it's a negative pi over 4. Is everybody okay on that? R is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus a negative 1 squared, and I'm going to get the square root of 2. So I could choose the square root of 2 comma negative pi over 4. That's how I would write it. On a quiz, I might ask for three versions of this. So I would say like the square root of 2 and 7 pi over 4. Everybody see where I get that? I would choose this one, and then I may choose a negative square root of 2 and, oh, I'd want to be here, 3 pi over 4. Does everybody follow that? But you'll always see me kind of do this kind of work when I do that. I don't have an answer for that. Ooh. Is there something else I can help with? No. <laughs> How are you? Oh. I'm fine. Thanks, Thanks for asking. Okay. Oh, you want to have something weird? Okay, this is my favorite part. I want you guys just to say hi, okay? Call Julie Kruger. Calling Julie Kruger. I haven't talked about tangents, but I figured I'd get on one anyway. <laughs> I find that funny. She's exercising. All right. All right. I just gave, I just stalled. Okay. You want to figure out R first? Yes. Okay. Is that what you did? Yes. Okay. So you said R is, are you okay that I just write it like this? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Like that, even though it's sloppy? Because it doesn't oh, matter. Right? I don't. Skip one. Didn't we? Oh, we skip. All right. Sorry. This, this one. This one's for Aaron. <laughs> so you said R is equal to the square root of 1 plus 3. Oh, you didn't even use your calculator, I bet. And you got? Right, I'm just going to choose 1 because I'm just going to come up with 1 point. Okay, But you could say, right, plus or minus 2, I agree. So it's 2. So it's going to be 2 comma something, right? And we are in the second quadrant. Would you agree? And so did you use your calculator? <coughs> oh, so theta is going to be the tangent inverse of a negative square root of 3. Would you agree? Yes. Which is going to give me this answer down here on your calculator. All right? And so this is how I do that if you're asked to do that on your calculator. I think of this as the square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. Okay, that's how I think of it. 
if I choose one half over the square. Because if you take a look at it, the square root of three is, is on the ones that I know, I'm either going to have the square root of three over two, one half, or the square root of two over two. Those are the complicated ones for me. Zero and one and one and zero, sh I don't think should be complicated, okay? The square root of two over two is always combined with the square root of two over two, right? So these two are paired. So the question is, is it one half over the square, over the square root of three over two, or the square root of three over two over one half? Well, if I remember that I multiply by the reciprocal, I can see that the two and and the one half are going to simplify them. I'm left with the square root of three. Okay, this is sine. This number is bigger than this number. Now, how do I know this? Well, the square root of one is one, and the square root of three is bigger than the square root of one. So this is where sine is bigger than cosine. So this is where y is bigger than x. What angle measurement does that have to be? Well, it's either pi over 6 or pi over 3. Where is y bigger, pi over 6 or pi over 3? Okay, that's, that's how I went through. Okay, now it's a lot of work, and pretty soon you, your brain makes shortcuts, which is called memorization. Okay, right, I'm not there yet. Okay, so now I know that if I'm in the fourth quadrant, I'm at a negative pi over three. But I'm not in the fourth quadrant, I'm in the second quadrant, okay? So if I go here, it's a pi over three. Here's three pi over three. <coughs> so this must be two pi over three. So I have to know that this is three pi over three and I have to know this is six pi over three. I have to know that this is four pi over four, this is eight pi over four, okay? And so this is going to be, uh, what I say? Two comma two pi over three. Or you could say a negative two comma negative pi over three. And you would get full credit from me. Especially since you said plus or minus two. You understand what I mean? Yes. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because there are questions that you need to know how to do without a calculator, okay? This one you have to do, Aaron, there's no way around it, but with a calculator. But the thing you have to understand is you're in the third quadrant, correct? So when you did it on your calculator, you're in the first quadrant, right? Yeah. Okay. So your R was what? Um, 2.581. So I'm going to have 2.581. Eight, one, and when you went to your calculator, you took the tangent inverse of a negative 1.5 divided by a negative 2.1, correct? Yeah. And you got a radiant measure. But that ra it doesn't know that you're in the fourth quadrant, your machine. It will give you, because you have a positive value in here, it thinks you're in the first quadrant. But you know, because you did this, because that's what I would do, you're there, okay? Because you're gonna be stressed. And you go, oh, but I'm here in the third. So you're gonna add 3.1415, blah, 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 to your answer. And what do you get? I'm hitting degrees. Oh. So what'd you get for degrees? Yeah, you would just add 180. Is that possible? Like, can you do that? Or do you have to do it already? Uh, it depends. Okay. It, you know, when you do these problems, it's going to give you a domain. It'll tell you what numbers theta is in between. Oh. And if theta is most often, most often, about 75% of the time, it will be in radians. It'll say 0 to 2 pi. You have to give the answer in radians. Okay. So you should have got 200 something, right? Okay. 215 point anything? 0.538. 0.538. Okay. 
and I, make sure you have degrees, okay? <coughs> and if you were in radians, you would simply add pi to that, okay? Polar equations, these are the ones you need to know. Uh, a circle, a line, a rose, and these are called petals. They're very popular. You may get something that looks like that. A spiral. You may get something that looks like this. A limacon, which means you have something. This is, this is very popular in calc, and this next one is very popular in calc. Let's see if I can draw it. It's where you got this little loop on the inside. It's called a limacon. Parabola. It can be a sideways one. <coughs> Hyperbola. Oh, I skipped one. Sorry. Isn't there one with a little dent in it? Yeah. The cardioid, I skipped it. This is limacon. I used to get, when I studied these when I was younger, I'd get cardioids and limacons uh, mixed, but cardioid looks like this. <coughs> so the cardioid comes from the word heart. Uh, cardiologist, does, aren't they people that yeah. work on hearts? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you'll see it look like this. Let's see if I can draw it. They say this looks like an upside down heart. Or you'll see it like this. It's got this little indentation into it. It doesn't loop. And the way that you know them, uh, a cardioid is always in this form. It's y equals, and it could be sine or cosine, but you'll have a number here, and it can be plus or minus, and I'll choose cosine, I'll choose sine. The number is exactly the same. And if this is sine, it goes up and down. If it's cosine, it goes left and right. And the minus and plus determine the sine. Yeah, it determines whether it's going up or whether it's going down. But these numbers are the same. In a limacon, it looks like this. Y equals A plus or minus again. But this number will be different. Yeah, what happens when they're reversed? So, I actually, like, on the, on the Desmos thing, I did it last night. Yeah. And when A is less than B, it always has a loop. Yeah. And then when they're equal, it always comes to the origin. Yeah. And then when, it's, when A is greater than B, it'll, like, just be a circle around the origin, but there's, like, a dent in it. Oh, it is. Okay, so it's easy to get confused with a cardioid, then. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not actually cardioid. Yeah. I just abbreviated it like LCD or something. That's how I remember it, like a loop cardioid. Oh, loop cardioid dent. And it's when it's less than B. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did everybody hear that? No. Well, you didn't. It's permanently on the abyss now. <laughs> LCD, less. So it's LCD stands for loop cardioid, like um, a dent. Oh. So, and, then, and, then and it's cool. only the loop cardioid dent. So the cardioid is when they're the same. Yeah, so then LCD just goes less than <laughs> I, I have an issue with L's. Okay. Unless they're scripted, I can't tell the difference between them and I, so I did a capital L. Yeah. So this is less than, yeah. this is equal to, this is greater than. These two are both limacons because they're unequal. This also has a loop and this has a dent. 
and here they're equal and they only make a cardioid. This is really cool. Actually, like, I just like looked at the, the Desmos thing and like made it sound like patterns. Yeah, I really like Desmos because even when I, and I've been doing verifications and I'm gonna have you doing ver verifications of how I know this is this. And you can type in the rectangular coordinates like x squared plus y squared equals the square root of x squared minus y squared, and it'll show you the graph. And then you can type in r equals whatever it is in polar, and it shows you the same graph. It's real. It's to me, Desmos is really cool. Uh, I thought it would be able to do like theta equals pi over four, and I got a little statement from them saying, "No, we're still working on that." I know a guy who works for Desmos. He runs uh, math on a stick at the state fair. Which, uh, so what it is, my wife and I have worked there every year for the last three years. We didn't work there last year because uh, we were on vacation at the time. And what it is, do you know where the Creative Arts Building is at the state fair? It's where they have um, sculptures, woodworking, painting, Right across, there's a little activity area for younger kids, and there are people there that have them do pre-math activities, like looking for patterning and that type of stuff. And it's really, really popular. So a lot of parents will drop off their kids for a while. <laughs> well, I get to play with them, you know, and I don't have grandkids, so I pretend they're my grandkids. And we build things with Duplos, build things with these magnetic, different shapes that click together. I always pick that spot. My wife picks the mirrors one where you come up with different shapes using mirrors. But there's a whole bunch of stuff. So. Also the, the lima bean things, they also relate to like quadratic, like their roots are the sum of the difference of one and bean. Okay. <coughs> So we're talking about lima beans. Oh, sorry, lima pines. Okay. I thought you were telling, when you said roots, I said, oh, this is really cool. We're going to talk about the roots when you plant. I'm going to have Mrs. Anderson plant lima beans for me. Oh, the zeros are? So let's make one up. Because this is, this is really cool. So you found out a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like so do you guys don't talk about this in pre-calc. No. Okay. Like okay. Like so give me an e give me an exact equation for a, a limacon. Well, it'd be easier if you just like drew one and you could find the, the equation really easily. A limacon. Do I got to go through those points? Yeah, so it, that's kind of like a, a dented one then. Um, so like... No, 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 I don't want a dented one. <laughs> God, Art, how do you guys do it? <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, that works. So, I so don't know if it does, the, but... The peak, the peak to the left is going to be like the sum. Right here. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be the sum of A and B, and then the peak to the... Peak kind of in the middle. Like, because the... Cause where they in right the here? Middle, yeah, that one. That's going to be the difference of A and B. And the, the other zero doesn't really matter because it's really continuous. Like, when you, when you graph it, it's still continuous. Um, and so it's like... It's like... See, math can be funny. It's, it's, a, it's a quadratic. Um, oh, so it, it's like uh, um, difference between squares. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if I have this, so like if it's R like, equals, um, this would be cosine theta. So if it's like negative 5 and negative 1, just say, then you know that 
first of all, A has to be less than B because it's a, it's a loop. Okay, so I'm going to go 2 minus 3. Except it's negative 2 minus 3. Oh, wait, maybe it's not. It'd be negative 2 minus 3. Cosine 3. Okay. So this has got to be... But it would actually be negative 3 minus 2 is less than B. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's okay. So then this would be a negative 5. That point. And this would be a negative one, that yeah. point. Oh, cool. And this one we don't care about. No, because when you actually graph it, that's not, like that's just like a continuous part, but when it like turns around on the x-axis, or like has a vertical tangent line, that's what actually matters. Wow. So you enjoyed you this part. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. So there was some pattern here that kind of caught your eye. Yeah. Okay. Wow, I'm always absolutely. All right, we are. We're back here, am I correct? You will be asked to do this. Go from rectangular to uh, polar. So, we're going to get rid of the x, and we're going to put what in there? What is x equivalent to? What? Our cosine theta. And what is the y equivalent to? So this is going to be 5 r squared cosine squared theta plus 5 r squared sine squared theta equals 7. So I'm going to factor out the 5 r squared. This, by the way, makes a circle. Does everybody realize that? Where the center is at 0, 0? So my answer, if the center is at 0, 0, my, ans my answer should be r equals something r is equal to some number. So I'll get this, and I'm left with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. This, by the way, is verification. What am I left with? What is this? One. One. So I have r squared is equal to 7 fifths. So my equation is either the square root of 7 fifths, or like Ellie said, the negative square root of 7 fifths. Both of them are the same circle. They have a radius of the square root of 7 fifths. Ryan, how would you do this one? Uh, substitute r sine theta. Okay, so I got r squared sine theta squared, correct? Yeah. Equals what? 3r cosine theta. So what would you do next? Um, Remember you went r by itself. So divide the r. Perfect. And then divide the sine squared theta. So you have 3 cosine theta over sine squared theta. Which you might see as r equals what? You would think so, wouldn't you? But more than likely, you're going to see this. I don't know why. I prefer this, but that's what they're going to do. Did you forget to, like, shouldn't the r still be squared? No, because he divided both sides by r. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Kyle. It's a line, horizontal. Isn't it like secant or something? Huh? Isn't it secant and tangent? Oh, 
I'll, I'll well, what what do you have to do here? R This is how you're going to see it. Yeah, so R equals 6. Cosecant, right. But you're going to see it more like this. They like staying in sine, in polar coordinates, they like staying in sine, cosine, and tangent. Because it's related directly to X and Y. Not that this isn't, not that cosecant isn't, but it's more direct. Okay, okay rectangular form. This is the same as x squared plus y squared equals. This is the same as y over r, but x squared plus y squared. Are we okay with that? So that means x squared plus y squared equals y, which is the same as this, x squared plus y squared minus y equals 0, which is the same as this, x squared plus y minus one half squared equals one fourth. I bet you I lost you here or no? So what I did here is this is a circle. Oh, you added one fourth. Correct? This is a circle. So I need an equation of a circle. And I have this minus y, and there's the number 1 in front of it. To complete the circle, what I have to do is, excuse me, to complete the square, what I have to do is take half of that 1 and square it, which is 1 fourth, correct? So this really became x squared plus y squared minus y plus 1 fourth is equal to, but then I have to add one-fourth to the other side. Because whatever I do to the left side is the right side. And then this will become y minus a half squared equals one-fourth. Now this is important because the center of my circle is zero comma one-half and my radius is one-half. I'll say it again. My center is 0 comma 1 half, and my radius is the square root of this, which is 1 half. In other words, this is in the form of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus, or equals, sorry, r squared. Have you ever seen that before? The equation of a circle? No? Forgot. You want me to do another one? Yes? If I were to draw this, in polar form, when theta is zero degrees, I'm at three. Would you agree? When theta is at pi, and here is a one, two, three. When theta is at pi over six, I'm at one and a half. When theta is at Pi over 2, I'm at 0, correct? So my graph, my graph will be like this. It will be a circle that looks like this. 
its center is right here at 0, 1.5 because that's halfway between 0 and 3, right? <coughs> and I have a radius of 1.5. Would you agree with that? So I should have x minus 1.5 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 1.5 squared. That's the equation of a circle. In other words, I should see this. x minus 3 halves squared plus y squared equals 9 fourths. That's what I should see as my answer. Are we seeing where 3 halves came from and 9 fourths? So, this is the square root of x squared plus y squared. This is equal to 3x over the square root of x squared plus y squared. This is x over r, which is cosine, right? Here's theta, here's x, here's r. Cosine of x equals x, as cosine of theta, sorry, is equal to x over r. So that means that if I replace r with x squared plus y, the square root of x squared plus y squared, that's where that comes. Everybody okay with that? So now I get x squared plus y squared equals 3x. x squared minus 3x plus something plus y squared equals 0 plus something. How do I get this something? I take half of 3, which is 3 halves, right? Square it. I get 9 fourths. I have to add 9 fourths to here because i got to add the same on both sides. So what is this? This is a trinomial square. It's x minus either half of the 3, which is 3 halves, or the square root of 9 fourths, which is 3 halves, squared plus y squared equals 9 fourths. There is my verification. Did that help? Pardon? Um, this one here. So this will be x squared plus y squared equals y over the square root of x squared plus y squared. So the only way I could solve this is x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power is equal to y. Because this is to the first power, right? And that's to the half power. And since the base is x squared plus y squared, I added the exponents and that's where the 3 halves came from. There isn't anything I can do with that. The 3 halves makes it goofy. r equals 5 means I have the square root of x squared plus y squared equals 5. Square both sides, I get x squared plus y squared equals 25, which is a circle that looks like this. That's 5 units out. That's a nice one. This one is the square root of x squared plus y squared times x over the square root of x squared plus y squared, y squared, not 8, equals 8. I get x equals 8. But somebody showed me a lot easier way. How did they show me? Oh, 
What's another name for R cosine theta? X. X equals 8. <laughs> I remember that last year. Kruger, don't you know that R cosine theta is X? Couldn't you just put X in there? And go, oh, yeah, that makes it a lot easier. This is the tangent How did I do this? Yeah, the tangent inverse of y over x is equal to pi over 6, which means the tangent of pi over 6 equals y over x. There we go. Now, Ellie, remember when we did pi over 3, we got the square root of 3. Now we have 1 half, which is sine of pi over 6, over the, the square root of 3 over 2. So I get 1 over the square root of 3 is equal to y over x. which means 1 over the square root of 3, x is equal to y. That's, that, that's the slope of that line. What? y equals 1, x equals square root of 3. Because it's fractional. Oh, I, I think I did okay. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Some people like it as square root of 3 over 3. It doesn't matter. Is that what you want me to do? or? All right, here are polar graphs. These are the last ones are gonna end up. So yeah, they want you to draw, they'll ask you to draw one petal. I don't put all those angles in there. I just use the ones I know. The ones I know are one, zero, and a half. I don't worry about what the square root of 3 is because not everybody knows that the square root of 3 is 1.414. What? Square root of 2 is 1.4. Oh, yeah, one point, square root of 2. So what is it? 1.7 something. Seven. Yeah. I can never remember. So this is what I'll do. Remember, theta is the independent variable. R is the dependent variable. So I start at 0. Cosine of 0 is what? 1. So I'm going to get 2 here. So at 0, I'm at 1, 2. Then cosine is, I'm going to put in pi over 3, because the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, and so I'm going to get 1. So pi over 3 is here. Here's 1. And then at pi over 2, I have 0. It's going to be a circle. So that means at 5 pi over 3, I'm going to have to be a 1. So I'm going to have a circle that looks like this. Actually, you know, that doesn't look like a circle. It looks like a lemon plum. Again, an art thing that I struggle with. It's not pointy at the end, but lemon plums are. Ever have a lemon plum, Brady? They're excellent. They're on sale right now at Byerly's. Buy one. Might cost you 50 cents. Then wait. They'll be yellowish. Don't <laughs> eat them. They're too hard. Wait till they get red. <laughs> Extremely sweet. Almost as good as papaya but not quite. Ever have a papaya? Go to Hawaii and have a papaya. Did you have papaya when you were there? Shame, shame, shame. Have you had it before? Did you like it? Oh my God. So this is a what?
Cardioid. Correct. Because these numbers are the same. Sideways or up and down? Up and down. Why? Sine. So again, I'm going to sketch it. Theta R. So I make it zero. What does R have to be at zero? I don't think so. I don't think so. Five. So here's zero, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, it's going to get to go by ten, so I'm going to go up by twos. Two, four, five, right here. Because when I get to pi over two, it's going to be what? Ten. So pi over two, two, four, six, eight, ten. What about at pi? What's it going to be? I don't think so. At pi. Pi is over here. What am I going to be? Yeah, five. five. One, two, three, four. Oops. Two. Four right here. What am I going to be at three pi over two? Zero. So I must go like this. And it's a cardioid. So it's got to have that little part of a heart. So it's got to go look something like that. There's my sketch. Does that make sense? Again, I just put in the ones I knew. Because I know when I get back to 2 pi, it's going to be 5 again, right? And I know it's a cardioid, so it's got to look like a heart. Because of LCD. This one's nice. Uh, 1, 2, 3. It's just a circle. This is what? Oh, that's three pi over two. What is this? Yeah, but what shape does it make? Well, it's it's got to make a rose. Yeah. How many petals? Three. If it's cosine, it's <coughs> what? So when it's sine, it's like on the y-axis. One of the petals on the y-axis. One of them is on the. Um, like zero. Okay, so theta r. We start at zero. It's going to be zero, correct? What? Yeah, you did well. I'm really impressed. Pi over two. Well, it would be three pi over two, correct? Actually, I probably should do pi over 3, because since I'm multiplying it by 3, it's going to be pi, correct? Right? And at pi, it's going to be 0. So something had to happen. It's 0 in here. Well, if I put pi over 6, it's going to be a half. So this will be 2. So at pi over 6, I'm going to be... One, two, I'm going to have a pedal that looks like this. Would everybody agree? So I'm at, th uh, at two pi. over three, 
I'm going to be at zero again, correct? Would everybody agree with that? Okay. So something had to happen between here and here. Right? What would I be at? So I went from pi over 3. What happened at pi over 2? I'd have 3 pi over 2, correct? What is the sign of 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. So at 3 pi over 2, I'd be at a negative 1, which means I come back here, and then I multiply it by 4. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. I must have made a no, mistake here. No, it's, it's still at pi over 2. You're just going negative 3. So you're going down. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm at pi over 2. Then it becomes 3 pi over 2, and it's a negative 4. So I'm going down, correct? 1, 2, 3, 4. I must have made a mistake here. Yeah, what? Oh, for some reason, I came up, well, it's a half at pi over 6, isn't it? So, no, at pi over 6, it's pi over 2, which is 1, and then it's going to be 4. So I screwed up here. 2, 3, 4. And so then this one's like this. Pardon? Yeah, I probably should have. But I'm not artsy, and so it gets sloppy. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this one's on one of the axes. Okay, so then I'm going to put in... Right over here, 5 pi over 6 is going to be 5 pi over 2. And 5 pi over 2 is what? Where's this next one got to be? Doesn't it have to be here with symmetry? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4. I think it has to be here. It's like an easier way to test that. It's just like find all the values for sine equals. So zero obviously, and then five two, and pi, and then three five two. Yeah. And then just divide each of those by three. And those those are the values you text. Oh, so then, so once you got this one, what did you do? Well, no. So you just you just think of okay. There's four values that that you can get either one or zero for sine, and you divide each of those by three, and then that gives you the answer. Yeah. And then you just so, so how would you have started this? Oh, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay.